Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Covenant Living Podcast. Today, I have to tell you, you know, I had Ryan on here, and then I improved the set by having Nikki on here, and now it's as good as it's going to get because I done outclassed myself, and today my lovely bride, Lynn Weeder is on the podcast. Glory to God. <laughs> Been wanting this for a while, and here she is. Now you know what makes me tick, and don't write any comments about that now. So, welcome to the podcast today, babe. Thank you. I love you. Hi. You're looking beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Today we're going to talk, the Lord showed her some things oh, a few months ago now, and we, we've we been talking about putting it on the podcast every time, and um, she's basically leading the podcast today, and I'm tagging along. She had an outstanding revelation and illustration about the benefits of the kingdom and adoption into the kingdom and how it just doesn't make any sense. People get all upset when people, ministers, minister on prosperity or healing or miracles or things like that that are benefits of the kingdom. And she ministered this, this to me several weeks ago. And so, um, sweetheart, just take off there and, and let's go have fun in the Word. All right. I'm going to start with Matthew 6.33 because that's where God took me. And we definitely have the two extremes here. David really likes his regular Bible. You'll see me consult my phone because I can switch versions and I can do different things. But that's one of the things that God brings together. Absolutely. See, I'm just like, I heard a, a minister talk one time it was hilarious but I completely identified with it he said I can just picture you know far in the future the great great gang grandkids coming down out of the attic <laughs> and, and saying you know holding up a phone an old ancient ancient phone and saying we found great grandpa's iPhone uh, as opposed to oh, it's great grandpa's Bible that he used I'm much more uh, of a traditionalist nostalgic. and a nostalgic sentimentalist than uh, <clears throat> than most people of my generation. So here we go. All right, Matthew six thirty three. Matthew six thirty three. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, no thought or take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Okay, one of the things that God talked to me about was, yes, we should seek Him first, seek His kingdom, seek the relationship with Him. But it doesn't say these other things will not be added to you. It says they will be added to you. However, if you don't know that, you cannot require you can't enforce his covenant that says those things are to be given to you. Mm -hmm. There was something in business, in our business just the other day, where there was a payment that we were expecting and it didn't show up. And, you know, I understand those things and so we waited a week and it still didn't show up. So then we started calling about it and basically our invoice or our summons for it had gotten lost someplace. But if we had have said nothing about it to enforce that, we wouldn't have received the payment for it. Right, absolutely. It's like if you make a, co a contract covenant with somebody and they say, you know, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z, but you don't know that the contract says they're gonna do X, Y, Z, then you don't know that this coming to you. So, Going on from there, God gave me a parable or an allegory, whichever way you want to do it, of a king who adopted street children, but then he left the country on business. 
He gave the authority to his children that he had already adopted to bring others into the family. And he left a contract that was open to whosoever will. It provided for all of their needs to be met. The, the clothing, the housing, the food, the health care, everything pertaining to their lives. The children who were living in their full rights and benefits were going to the street to bring more people into the family and let those who had already signed the contract know their rights and benefits. And some received it with gladness, but some were convinced that they should only be seeking that relationship with the king, but none of his stuff. Those already in the castle tried to explain that they could be more about their father's business and learn more about the king living within his kingdom and in their rights if they weren't having to spend so much time just surviving in the streets. The street children wanted to be humble and stay in the street until the king's return and then they would get to know him better, which the king would be happy to have them back in his kingdom at that time. Mm -hmm. But they continued to live as they were before they were adopted and they fought against those who were trying to let others know their full and rightful place. Matthew 6.33 was what God used to show me, yes, those are part of the benefits, and yes, I want that relationship. You get both. You get the relationship and the things that you need to live in this world. However, if you don't know the things are available, you can't get them. So you would be negligent if we didn't tell others. Just think about in this allegory, if those kids who are already living in the castle with their needs met, with their food paid for, with their health care benefits intact, if they sat in that castle and did nothing to let those others know about it, that would be what is selfish. And yeah, you can take small amounts out of the castle to the street to show them, look, it's real. It is real. I have food. I have all of these things. I'm healthy. I'm whole, like the testimony with our daughter. But you can't move the entire kingdom out into the street at well, this point. It'll that, eventually get there. Right. And that's the, you know, that's what's so... Sometimes it's, it, it tries to be so frustrating to get across to people, look, you can live, you know, Philippians says you are a citizen, your citizenship is in heaven now. Deuteronomy talks about days of heaven upon the earth. You should be living in your kingdom rights right now. And, and that's one of the purposes for testimonies. That's why we got on here and we, we uh, recorded Nikki's testimony and we recorded Ryan's testimony. And, um, you know, if you're all, uh, friends with us on our Facebook page, I posted a testimony the other day where our washer wasn't working right. We tried to cycle several ro uh, loads through it and it just it wouldn't work right. And the red light was flashing that there was something wrong and all of that stuff. And, and she told me about it. And I walked in, I inquired of the Lord what needs to be done. And I heard, and I put my hand on it, and all I said was, I am a tither. And that was it. We went ahead and finished breakfast. We went in after breakfast, started a load, and it's been working just fine ever since. One thing on that, after he prayed over it, I had the prompting to unplug it and leave it unplugged for 10 minutes and plug it back in. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with I am a tither, go to Malachi 4. You have tithing rights. It says Satan is rebuked for your sake if you're a tither. If you're a tither, he got nothing on you or any of your things. And that's part of your covenant rights. That's part of living in the kingdom along with the miraculous healings if necessary, the walking in divine health all the time. Our kids don't even know who their pediatrician is. They've never been in the hospital. I have never been in the hospital except when I was born. Our kids weren't even in the hospital when they were born. So they have never been in a hospital. And that's the way every single child of God should live. And I'm doing a lot of preaching when it's supposed to be her. <laughs> Which we kind of knew would happen. <laughs> he talks a lot more than I do. 
All right. He mentioned Philippians 3, and that was actually the next scripture that God sent me to. Is Philippians 3.20 <laughs> in the Amplified. I enjoy the way the Lord works. It says, we are citizens of the state which is in heaven. And from it also we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are citizens. We are currently citizens of the state which is in heaven. Even the Lord's prayer that things be on earth as they are in heaven. heaven. Exactly. And that's the difference between religious tradition and actually living your life according to this word. Religious tradition, there's churches all over the world today that go in and recite the Lord's Prayer. But that's exactly what they do. They recite something because that's what you're supposed to say. Instead of releasing faith, Lord, your will be done on earth, in my life, in this situation, as it is in heaven. That is a promise, and that's what we're told to do and release our faith for. And once we know we are citizens of heaven, then in 2 Corinthians 5.20, it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Glory to God. As though God did beseech you by us, uh, we pray you in Christ's stead that you be reconciled to God. So, once you acknowledge, yes, I am a citizen of heaven, now, we are then sent as ambassadors. We go to the street, children. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's not already a member of this citizenship of heaven, mm -hmm. and we are ambassadors. Now well, we got, we got into that. I got to ministering with my sweetheart. We got all carried away and... and uh, what was going to be one podcast, we had uh, plenty of enough material to make two podcasts. And so, if you join us again next week, we're going to do part two of this podcast on being ambassadors in this land. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day. Jesus is Lord.